China is heading toward a crisis, and that might be all a part of Xi Jinping's plan. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. China's economy is on life support, and it could spell major trouble for the U.S., but not in the way you think. If you haven't heard, China's economy is facing a crisis, one that's been years in the making. After three decades of what looked like unstoppable growth, the bubble is bursting. China, under Communist Party rule, seemed to have a limitless ability to manufacture and consume. And that was largely because the Communist Party put economic growth above all else. But that growth came at a cost. The real estate market is a perfect example. It makes up about 30% of China's GDP, basically the only place China's middle class could invest their money. And selling land was really the only way local governments could make money. Basic social services, like repairing roads and pensions, depended on land sales. And that meant building. Constant building. China has a population of 1.4 billion people, but there could be enough vacant homes in China to house up to 3 billion people, a former top China official said. That's why China has so many ghost cities. Real estate companies would take out loans to build properties and pay back those loans by selling apartments that didn't even exist to China's middle class. This could not last forever, and the government knew it. The Chinese regime tried several times to limit the credit that was rapidly expanding the real estate bubble. But since the whole system depended on real estate by now, it couldn't be stopped. And then the default started. Suddenly, major Chinese real estate companies couldn't pay back their debt. And that had a ripple effect across the entire Chinese economy. Without revenue from land sales, local governments began asking for bailouts. But the central government considers bailing out local governments a moral hazard. Local governments are estimated to be $13 trillion in debt. This past August, the party began sending teams of officials to more than 10 of the financially weakest provinces to scrutinize their books. But unrest is brewing. And this has become an existential crisis for the Communist Party. But Chinese leader Xi Jinping doesn't care. There's a very dangerous reason for that. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. For years, the Chinese Communist Party has prioritized economic development at all cost. So you'd think the party would be pretty worried about what seems like an economy barreling toward disaster. And they are, don't get me wrong, the party is terrified an economic downturn could result in social upheaval that could topple the regime. But Xi Jinping is breaking from party tradition. For him, the economy is not the number one priority. We know that because of how the party has responded to the economic crisis. It's reaching its fullness now, but the writing has been on the wall for a long time. We didn't see the party trying to raise funds for social programs for its rapidly aging population. There's been no real attempts to lower the cost of living for young families, especially in big cities like Beijing or Shanghai. If the economy was still top priority for the party, you would expect to see some kind of movement there especially because that could go a long way in alleviating any social unrest as the economy started to sputter. But that's not what happened. Instead, Xi Jinping has put the focus on military and technological development. In fact, China's military spending is getting pretty close to America's. The real Chinese budget in terms of military is probably close to about $700 billion. That's a big budget. And as Senator Cotton mentioned, they are increasing in real terms six, seven, eight percent, cranking out ships, cranking out fifth generation aircraft. Now you might think that's insane with everything else going on with the Chinese economy. But remember, in the days of Mao, China was desperately poor, and yet they still developed the atomic bomb, hydrogen bomb, as well as ICBMs. A nation at war can overlook a little poverty, right? Xi Jinping has been warning Chinese people of great struggles ahead, and to prepare for war. And from that perspective, a failing Chinese economy is just another weapon of war. Because if China's economy tanks, that will also hurt the U.S. For the U.S. economy, China as a workshop is much more important than China as a consumer. China makes everything, from cheap crap to most of America's medical equipment. 
We saw how devastating supply chain disruptions were during COVID, and that was with everyone trying to fix it. That's why I always say it's important the US begins to decouple from China now, under its own terms. Otherwise, the CCP will have a powerful tool to use against the US. The first victim of a fully militarized Chinese Communist Party would be the Chinese people. Then it would be Taiwan. China has vowed to use force to conquer the island. This is how I know Xi Jinping is a gamer. He knows all about the war economy. I just hope he hasn't discovered nanomachines, son. So the Chinese Communist Party has always considered itself at war with the US. But previously it used economic warfare, things like hacking, intellectual property theft, etc. Now we might be getting to a time of actual warfare. China actually recently released a new plan for how to conquer Taiwan. I have a video I want to show you about that. But first, China Uncensored would not exist without support from viewers like you. For a small monthly contribution, you can join the exclusive China Uncensored social media platform on Locals. That's ChinaUncensored.Locals.com. And as a thank you, I answer your questions on the show. Today's question comes from Kaizen. Hey Chris, longtime enjoyer of your content and also longtime enjoyer of video games. One of the most notable ones recently has been Genshin Impact and their Honkai Star Rail. Their company, Hoyoverse slash MiHoYo, is a China-based company. Even so, their video game content has been incredibly enjoyable when it comes to the music, story, and characters. It's difficult to see any sort of open CCP influence. However, I'm incredibly conflicted as to whether or not I should engage in their content. Are there any real concerns about doing so? Thanks. You know, that's actually the same strategy the CCP uses in a lot of Hollywood movies. In The Martian, it's the Chinese space program that saves the day. Something similar happens in Gravity. And like with Genshin Impact, there's no overt propaganda, it's much more subtle than that. The idea is to normalize the Chinese regime in people's minds. That's why I always remind people that China is a country that uses rape as a form of torture. It's not normal, it's not just another country. Fortunately, if you watch China Censored, you should be pretty clued into that whenever you see a movie or game that does something like this. And you can use it as an opportunity to say to your friends and family, hey, did you notice how China was portrayed? Here's what China is actually like. And that way, we can turn their propaganda against them. Thanks for your question and your support, Kaizen. And here's that video I wanted to show you about China's new invasion plan of Taiwan. Be sure to check it out. And join our exclusive social media platform on chinauncensored.locals.com. The link is below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.